Star Drive 117.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind Hey guys, how's it going? It's Monday, February 27th And this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8 We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud And make sure to support us on Patreon. So what is happening on this wonderful and amazing Monday? We've got current news from around the world, the Sunday message word study, and of course, 2G Talks with Eddie Kwan from San Francisco. All right, everyone, how are you doing? And the biggest question of the day is... How was your weekend? Yes, it was a beautiful and awesome weekend. The last weekend of February and March is just two days away. Can you guys believe it? It's already February 27th. One more day and then it's March. So I am super excited to get into a new month. And uh, it just really gives us that... uh, that feeling that time is passing by so fast, we've got to get the things we need to get done, our responsibility and our life in this history. So I am sure all of you enjoyed your weekend. It must have been meaningful. Uh, just, you know, some of you rested. Some of you received grace and fire. Some of you, you know, had a lot of work to do. But it's Monday again, and we can restart another amazing week together with the Lord. And of course, this week's message is about the power of word and prayer. So uh, it is a good morning to everyone out there on the Morning Star Drive. I hope you had an amazing weekend. Uh, Looking forward to having another amazing week together. So lots of changes, things happening. So looking forward to making sure that we can make programs that will help everyone out together. And of course, all of you guys can see it. The YouTube shorts are out. And uh, already one of the shorts has like over like I think about 800 views, right? Let me just make a double check right here. But I saw one of them had like 777 views just uh, yesterday. Right now, it is at, what's it at right now? It is at 782 views. So that's kind of cool. The last one we had, uh, that was from uh, the Philippines. And that one has like almost 400 views. So uh, these Daily Faith things are going pretty well. It is going pretty well, and and I'm really, really happy about it, too. Uh, The only thing I'm thinking about right now is, uh, like, we have these shorts. We have a lot of people joining the podcast that are not uh, from our church. So that's, you know, big welcome to everyone out there. Uh, But this podcast channel was uh, specifically made for people in uh, my church and such. And um, so some of you out there, if you're here, a new listener, some of the stuff may not make sense to you since you haven't heard the same sermon as us. But if you are a believer in God, you are always welcome. And I'm sure that you're going, you're going to understand, especially the points about faith too, right? So hope you guys enjoy the shorts and the podcast. And, you know, let me know in the comments if you have any specific requests for YouTube shorts. Uh, we already have a request from Kara over there in Florida that wants some... Uh, um, that would like some shorts on repentance. And I, because that made me think a lot more deeply about it. So I'm actually thinking of moving all my shorts over to my Espresso channel because like there's going to be videos on repentance and stuff already on that channel. So um, maybe, I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I, I think I should move this like, What's going to happen is if I put the shorts here, remember the way shorts move, it doesn't like, it's not like a video. So just the words like daily faith or whatever it is, if it goes out, then it's going to attract people to this channel. And I'm not saying I don't want people to come to this channel. It's just made specifically for our church. But if we move it to the Espresso with Sky channel, then we'll have the tips and the videos and all those other different stuff there. So I'm thinking we might move it over to that side. I'm not sure what you guys really think about that, but I think it might be good uh, Because, you know, like uh, later on, we'll get into some of the comments that came out. And some of the comments are from people who don't know anything about the church. So when I make a short comment, they won't understand because it came from the Sunday message. They'll be like, oh, you know, some guy said that it sounds a little bit superficial. But kind of everyone in our channel knows what I'm talking about kind of thing either way. So uh, I hope that, uh, yeah, I'm really thinking about maybe I already have two more shorts coming up on this channel. So I'm thinking after these two shorts, move it over, move uh, the rest of the shorts over to... uh, 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 to the Espresso with Sky channel. So if you guys are only on this channel, I would recommend if, you, if you're not coming to the same church as me, which you might kind of feel like uh, like some of this stuff might not make sense. Uh, if you move over to the Espresso with Sky channel, that's kind of be that's kind of like an open channel I made. And I think I might move those shorts over to there, Espresso with Sky, all right? Uh, today's 2G Talks. Uh, it's talk, I'm going to talk about developing ourselves during this time. And I really want to, I, I, I ask everyone, uh, this is what Eddie's saying. Ed, Eddie's, uh, in the, today's 2G Talks, Eddie says he's going to talk about developing ourselves during this time and asking everyone to share any advice they have for a 20-year-old on what they should develop in their 20s. And um, he's also going to ask what they might be trying to, what are you trying to develop with yourself right now? So that's going to be kind of cool 2G Talks today too. So I'm looking forward to that also. Uh, also, tomorrow is probably uh, in the media and stuff. So, uh 
just to let you guys know, we need some prayers because uh, there is a temporary injunction that's going to be uh, uh, there's you know for the Netflix show that's supposed to come out this Friday. Uh, there is a temporary injunction where they will go over uh, you know they'll make a you know whether to put the Netflix out before or after the trial. Like, will it come out this Friday or push to after the trial? So that's something we really, really need to pray for. February 28th is the day of the trial in Korea time. I'm not sure what time though, but they will be making a decision, uh, decision tomorrow. So that's something we do have to uh, really pray about for a victory over there too, okay? And especially with uh, this week's message of the power of prayer in the word, I really hope that we can pray uh, for this temporary injunction to go through so that uh, we don't have to worry about that right now at this time. Either way, and we'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow, all right? So make sure you pray for temporary injunction, which means to suspend uh, the, the Netflix show to come out until a little bit later, okay? So uh, for me, is I've been having some really amazing conversations over the weekend, very, very meaningful. And uh, there's this one conversation I had that inspired me so much. And I wanted to share this with everyone, uh, uh, not giving any names or anything like that, but super good friend of mine I love so much and uh, uh, called me up. And ask me about what is happening and, you know, have I heard anything about the slander here and there or like accusations or rumors or whatever. And he's like, you know, do you, have you heard anything? I, I said, yeah, this is what I've heard so far. And uh, he was, this person was telling me that they were affected by the, just the rumors for like weeks. And just in a bad spiritual condition, you know, people, you know, just listening to the rumors and such, it was like really, really bad for him spiritually. And, but this person uh, kept listening to the word. And he kept praying about it, right? He eventually started praying about it. And uh, just from last week and a couple of days ago, we just ended up talking for several hours. But it was super inspiring and moving because this person was only hearing one side of the story. And then uh, in his own heart, in his own mind, he made, he's like, man, there's so much good that has happened to me by being in the history of God. By being with God, so many things have changed. And he said, you know what? I want to hear the other side. And we had several talks, and he talked to some other people, and uh, then, he, then he said he completely changed after a week, really repented to God about his own shortcomings and the mistakes that he made. And I was so inspired just to see God work so powerfully in someone's life. And I, I do think that sometimes we may think that we lost someone, but instead we have to realize that God is good, and God has been taking care of all of us, and it requires all of us to reach out to God for God to, you know, God's hand is reaching out. We just got to reach out and grab that hand. And what I really want to tell everyone out there, if you are struggling, if you heard rumors or anything else like this, uh, don't just listen to one side. Go out, find someone to talk to. You got to see both sides. Make your own decisions. And even for myself, I am very open to this too. So if you guys need to talk, I am there too. Just DM me whatever it is and we can talk uh, talk, and just just you know shoot the breeze on, on what, what's, what's been going on and stuff too. And you know, uh, as I was talking to my really, really good friend, uh, you know, a couple things I just want to remind everyone is uh, one of the things that makes, uh, which makes things very, very difficult for us is when we have a relationship with someone and then they're the ones giving the rumors or they're the ones telling us uh, negative things, right? Because the closer you are to someone, the more likely you're going to believe them without any evidence just because of the relationship itself, right? So I just want to remind you guys again, we need to separate the relationship from evidence, like just the relationship is not evidence. So just because I trust this person doesn't mean that that what they say is true, right? So you have to separate your relationship from the evidence and look at just the evidence itself, right? Because one of the things that you know people are going to do is they'll use emotion to compromise your decision making. So it doesn't matter who is telling you. What matters is what is actually being said. And that's going to be the most important part. And like I said, there's a couple of things you should never accept as evidence like hearsay. I heard this person say that this person said that this person said this. It just got, it's gone through too many minds and too many filters, right? So be very careful with what you hear. And, uh, you know, another thing that I would say you watch out for is just because they say, oh, and this person agrees and this person believes and this person admits it too. Don't believe that either. Check it yourself. If they say, A, hey, and guess what? This person said the same thing. Then go and talk to that person and say and see if that person really said that or not, right? Because that's already happened to me once where someone said my name and said, I agree with this person. But then when I heard later, I was like, nope, I didn't say that at all. Like I said that, but I didn't mean that. So this, um, that's, that's another thing you have to watch out for, right? And the last thing that you have to really think to yourself is, 
you might you might hear someone say, why would this person lie? And the answer is, when it comes to something really, really serious, you shouldn't be thinking, why would this no, why would this person lie? You should be thinking the opposite. Is there are so many reasons why someone would lie, right? How could you narrow it down to, oh, this person would never lie? What do you mean? People lie all the time. There's, a, there's always a reason to lie. People lie for money. People lie for fame. People lie for attention. People lie for love. There's so many reasons to lie. But for us to kind of like break it down to, oh, why would this person lie? It's, it's not a good evidence, right? And I'd say the last thing that everyone should watch out for whenever you hear a rumor is watch out for fear mongering, which means uh, people, the people are trying to make you have fear in your heart because when you have fear, it compromises your decision making because fear is an emotion, right? So fear compromises your rationale. It compromises the way that you uh, make decisions. Like uh, they'll say, you know, like people when they, when they're coming in fear mongering, they're like, man, just wait till it comes out. You guys are, everyone's going to be like this and everyone's going to lose their faith. Like, no, That's not something where you can't make up the decision for everyone else's mind. How do I know? Because when you say everyone, that doesn't include me because just just because I hear something doesn't mean I'm going to be like, oh, no, you have to speak only for yourself. So don't don't allow people to speak for other on their behalf. Like I've heard someone say to me, like, man, once this rumor comes out, 90 percent of the people in this country are going to leave their faith. I'm like, oh, come on. Right. Like, did you really do you have 90 percent of the people backing you up right now? So why are you talking to me like personally? Why don't you just get the 90, 90% of the people should all be talking up, talking out at church then, right? And this is what you call fear-mongering. And it's set to put fear in your hearts to make you think you rationally make like the wrong decisions. So don't let people put fear in your hearts. Always take only what is rational, what is reasonable, right? And so far for me, everything that I've heard like rumor-wise, I haven't heard anything that's that's like so like conclusive. I haven't heard anything like that. I've heard, haven't heard anything conclusive yet. So if, you know, look at what the ba- evidence is based on. Look at what other people said. Why would, you know, why would this person lie or stoking your fear in your hearts? It means that, you know, if, if basically for me, that means that that's all they have to stand on, right? They don't have any evidence. So all they're standing on is hoping that you have fear in your heart or trying to come up with other evidence that's not even really that great, right? So I leave you with the Bible verse, 1 Peter chapter uh, 5, verse 6 through 8. It says, humble yourselves there, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaming lion looking for someone to devour, right? Be alert. Be sober minded. Don't allow for your heart or your emotions to get compromised. Don't let anything come in to your heart and emotions, but leave everything to God. Right, leave it all to God, and I think that's we got to put it in prayer, right? Because I know a lot of people, even before going into prayer, they're straight up like agreeing or whatever it is, and it's like that's not the that's not the right way to do it, right? So I hope that everyone, um, if you have anything else, go ahead. You can uh, private message me, whatever it is. I am very open to talking and just seeing what uh, what you guys think or what's in your hearts and your minds too. All right. Uh, the poll, new poll is out is what do you need prayer for? Whether it's your health, your finance, your faith, right? Um, your relationships or other things you can comment uh, in the section too. Would love to hear what you guys need prayer for. And uh, I know that Tuli, especially who's doing the prayer podcast, you can look at that and also do a lot of prayers for you guys too. All right. So let's get to some channel comments from last week. I really, really appreciate a lot of these comments you guys are giving. Uh, first is, uh, a prayer request, and I think this is one of the great things about the prayer podcast. Uh, Karen wrote, uh, "My lower back has been in pain for two weeks. When I sit or drive, I have to. I've been to two different massage professionals. I have a few stretches to work on. Thanks for your prayers to help me heal faster. And I think this is part of the community. Here is praying for each other. So our prayers go out to you, Karen, and we we pray for your lower back." to be healed in Jesus name, right? So I, I hope that all of us here will really be able to pray for each other in the community too. Uh, Kiera, Daniel Lee over there in uh, Florida. Uh, she looked at the shorts. She said, can you do a short video on how to repent? I understand the concept, but I don't know what to say or how to effectively do it. Thanks from Florida, USA. And Kiera, yes, definitely would love to uh, get, would love to do some shorts. And I think we're going to move that over to Espresso with Sky. I think so. So if you want to... Um, Click onto that channel. That's a good one to look at. I think we'll move our shorts over there. Uh, Yen Yu, 
Uh, in Singapore says, big amen to the servants in the sky. We came here for God and God will see this history through. Uh, this is the one I was telling you guys, Ben Barrett. Uh, he said that that sounds very superficial, brother. Uh, that was the short one I said. If you want to look the condition of your spirit, um, take a picture of your room. And, you know, that's what I'm saying is there will be misunderstandings because they don't hear the same sermons that we do. And basically, this, you know, we learned in the sermons that, you know, the condition of your physical is also the condition of your internal. So if your mind is unorganized and you're going to have an org unorganized desk, an unorganized room, right? And the condition of where you're at, it shows eventually in your physical side. So uh, that's, a, you know, that's why I kind of apologize to, to Ben. And that's why I was thinking about uh, moving these uh, YouTube shorts over to the Espresso with Sky channel because... A lot of people are going to come over to this channel and they're going to they're not they're going to misunderstand it and not get a bunch of things. So, like again, I want to hear you guys what you guys think of me moving the shorts over to that side too. Uh, Esther TPK, uh, she's talking about the sermon to the sky. Winter is already here. Personally, my faith is in the winter season. I really appreciate your topic today. I'm not dealing very well. Just ignoring. Uh, I stop all my missions. Struggling to go to physical service but still trying. Spiritually and physically, I'm freezing, lucky, not dead, still fighting. And it kills a bit, knowing all that is going around, seeing what happened in the past, people in many factors, seasons of life, yet trying hard to tune our channel back to God or just to mute the voice. I don't even know anymore why I'm here. How can I carry on? How can we continue to grow in, in this history? Still trying to uh, find back the first love click with God. Yeah, we came for God, but it's only human that we sometimes feel sad, de demotivated, a bit lost because of the seasons of life. I'm keeping my distance till the season passes just to ease the pain so I can carry on. Uh, your topic hit me hard today, brings me tears, but I appreciate it. It's what the heart longs for. And I think somewhere in, in James, it says, blessed is the one who preserve, uh, who perseveres through trials, have stood the test, and that person will receive the crown of life and that the Lord has promised who, uh, who love him. So, but, he, but then uh, she ends with, it's hard. And, you know, we get it. Is, uh, everyone's going through a different season right now, but uh, I really hope that with this community, we'll be able to support each other as much as possible. I'm really hoping that uh, even Tuli listens to this and we'll be able to put some of this into uh, the uh, prayer podcast also. Uh, last but not least for the comments from last week, we have Lynn Sue. Says, I can't thank God enough for being able to be forgiven in this time period. Thank you for sharing this short yet powerful message. Amen. So, uh, yeah, I'm really, really thankful and grateful that uh, we're able to kind of expand our channel more and more. And I hope that we'll be able to do a lot more when it comes to uh, bringing more and more people to the history of God. All right. If you guys are looking for some clothing, some spiritual clothing, get your clothes and show your pride through what we wear, and you're going to find it in uh, the description, the link below. Later on, I'll be able to uh, connect that uh, that store, that clothing shop to this channel, so that'd be pretty cool. I'll do that pretty re uh, pretty soon. Uh, big shout outs to those that are supporting us on Patreon. We have Jessica and Joro from Taiwan, and we have Abraham in uh, Malaysia. Grateful for all your support in supporting us financially, for believing in support of this channel. Grateful for all of you supporting this channel spiritually by praying for it. And if you too want to support us, then check out the Patreon link in the description. And if you're on SoundCloud, click the blue button on the homepage. Patreon is that crowdfunding site that you can support the Morning Star Drive at just $3 a month. And at the moment, we have lecture training, we have Bible studies. So go ahead and check it out, Word Studies too. All right. So let's get into some music from member artists from around the world. Yes, on this amazing Monday, we're going to start off, start off with Die Wings from Korea. On uh, They got this hot song that is going like... Uh, it's pretty much going viral on, uh, uh, what do you call it, on uh, YouTube. And this song, oh, what's it called? It's called I Feel Like That. And the last time I checked, it was already at, uh, uh, it was already at like a hundred, uh, it was at like a hundred thousand, right? I, I saw that it was like at a hundred thousand for, uh, uh, hundred thousand views for this song I feel like that let me just check right now what what is the views at right now let's just see let's see I'm on the die wings uh die wings I feel I feel like that or at a hundred fifteen thousand right so I feel like that this is the one that's kind of going viral for them so I'm really really happy that uh it's going viral there I hope that a bunch of other songs will go viral too there's like the song that I love the most is a song flow 
it's at 14k, but I feel like that is the big one right now. So super, uh, super proud of them over there. So Die Weeks from Korea, that first song is going to be I Feel Like That. And then we have Rapture Collective from Australia with Grateful featuring Sapphire. And of course, that's a new song that came out last week. Everyone loves this song. And that song is now on my YouTube channel. And new music videos coming out every single Saturday. And then we have Tecmo Plus from Japan with the song Promise. Just because you hate me doesn't mean I'm not cool. No goodbye, but I'm the way to Sometimes I feel that it's so well out of your good. That I'm so young, I get I'm good. Could I die? You got it, Dorago. There's a reason for every flow that's I'm on my way. Cut him, cut him, I die. I just want to do. Cut up, cut up, boom, and get it, eat I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart And my beloved Lord, King of Kings Thank you for leading me beside the waters of peace Good Shepherd, you made me lie down in green pastures Like a dam that overflows, it's just too much to capture I'm counting all my blessings and my lessons And giving thanks like it's a daily obsession uh, You'll find me right here in the Garden of Eden Where else is there to go? What more do I need? My roots grounded like the pine trees They're solid like the rocks be Finer than the cities of Lebanon From A to Z Branches reaching for the sky I'm connected to the heavens like the Wi-Fi Planted by the rivers of life that never run dry As the seasons pass by I'll be bearing fruits just before the harvest time so grateful i'm getting in my feelings now i'm feeling so thankful there's too many stories i can count them on my thankful jehovah's been faithful i took the main course had the lab now my faithful 
aha, now this don't mean that life hasn't been painful But my God gave me power to overcome when the rain he gave me power. Each time I'm down I let my knees touch the ground And every time I call his name it's send a legion full of angels Thank you Lord, thank you for everything You gave your life for me, I owe to you everything Thank you for giving me strength in the AM So now when I start my days I will start with an Amen yeah. Was held bent on a deathbed, couldn't catch my breath Good news of the gospel, he paid the debt The God sent the Lord's hand Leads me to the golden city kingdom Now I'm wearing true religion
And that was Tecmo Plus from Japan. And that song is Promise. Uh, before that was uh, Rapture Collective from Australia with a brand new song came out last week. That's Grateful featuring Sapphire. And of course, feature arts of the day. That's Die Wings from Korea with I Feel Like That. Just amazing job that all these members, uh, members of our church from around the world are making this awesome music. So super grateful. Thank for all of them and all the hard work that they're diligently putting in. All right. So let's get into news going on around the world. And as we, you know, as we learn about more and more about the power of prayer, like this is something that we have to realize deep in our hearts. If, if our prayer is that powerful, it can call upon the almighty God to take action. And we're supposed to be the one praying for the world. We're the ones supposed to repent for the world. We have to realize how much we need to know what's going on so we can pray for it properly. Right? A lot of times we're kind of like, uh, the, the word is we might, kind of make our prayers too selfish. If the, po- if the power of our prayer is that powerful and you only pray for yourself, but you're able to affect other people's lives, then we kind of have to realize like it's kind of selfish if you really realize how powerful your prayer is. So I hope that we can uh, learn a lot from seeing like some, some news that's going on around the world, right? So let's first start off with China and G20. And China refuses to condemn Russia's Ukraine invasion. Uh, during the G20 deadlock. So finance ministers from the world's largest economies have failed to agree on a closing statement following a summit in India after China refused to condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Beijing declined to accept parts of a G20 statement that deplored Russia's aggression in the strongest terms. So Moscow said anti-Russian Western countries had destabilized the G20, and it comes after China this week published a plan to end the conflict that was viewed by some as pro-Russian. So after taking a backseat since the invasion a year ago, Beijing has stepped up its diplomacy efforts surrounding the conflict in recent weeks. Its top diplomat Wang Yi toured Europe this week, culminating in a warm welcome by Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow. Now China also this week published a 12-point plan for ending the war in Ukraine in which it called for peace talks and respect for national sovereignty. However, the 12-point document did not specifically say that Russia must withdraw its troops from Ukraine and did not condemn Russia's invasion. The Chinese document was welcomed by Russia, prompting U.S. President Joe Biden to comment, Putin is applauding it, so how could it be any good? All right, so there's the first in news. A lot to pray for when it comes to, you know, this is a world matter. It's, it's involving NATO, the G20, the G7 or G8, whatever it is. So I really, really hope that we can pray for this with all of our hearts. Uh, second in the news, we talked about this last week. The elections in Nigeria are all finished now, but votes are counted. But final results may take days. Why? Because it's one of the tightest presidential elections since military rule ended in 1999, and the turnout appeared to be high, with many young first-time voters arriving before dawn to cast their ballots. Saturday's voting was marred by long delays at polling stations, as well as scattered reports of ballot box snatching and attacks by armed men. And some parties have raised alarm over allegations of irregularities which could lead to a disputed outcome. The elections are the biggest democratic exercise in Africa with 87 million people uh, eligible to vote. And politics has been dominated by two parties, the ruling APC and the PDP. And since the restoration of multi-party democracy, and that, like those two are the main ones since it's been a uh, multi-party democracy was restored 24 years ago. But this time, there is also a strong challenge from a third-party candidate in the race to succeed the pres- current president from the Labour Party's Peter Obi, who is backed by many young people. And the final result is not expected until at least Tuesday. So let's wait out and see what's going to actually happen. And most likely, from what we've heard, it's going to be disputed, right? There were some like violent clashes at the polling stations too, which is uh, a little bit shocking also. All right. Uh, last but not least, I'm going to go into something that's just amazing that's not getting enough coverage. If you guys haven't heard of Asbury University, uh, there's something called the Asbury University Revival in Kentucky. It's a 16-day spontaneous spiritual revival on Asbury's university campus. It, 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 it is, it, it's crazy, okay? Nonstop praise and worship and prayer going on for almost 400 hours. The revival started on the morning of February 8th when students attended an ordinary chapel prayer that became extraordinary. So remember, this is just spontaneous. At the end of service, students were dismissed. A few students lingered, and everyone had a real strong uh, sense that they should just worship. Worship, and uh, the more that they worship, uh, the more they could sense God's presence, right? And uh, after the first day, and the right ingredients were present to keep the spiritual fire burning— now, like Wilmore, this place in Kentucky is home to 6,000 people, right? 
But guess how many people it's hosting for this 16-day revival? Spontaneous, out of nowhere. 50 to 70,000 people have come to this like 24-hour, 16-day revival. Tell me that is amazing. And it, it's going to be the last. They're going to continue it offline, but there's a, the, the last day of an in-person revival. Uh, and Asbury is also already scheduled to host a National Collegiate Day of Prayer, which was set up two years ago. But it's pretty crazy. Like You just have a regular worship in that, uh, in that university, and people are just inspired to stay and keep worshiping, and they're constantly worshiping over and over, and it just turned into a revival. Home to only 6,000 people, 50 to 70,000 people coming in from all over the world are coming to this revival. And it just ended 16 days straight, which is incredible. So, you know, God is working. God is working. We can see him working in this Asbury revival. And I hope that all of us can really understand this a lot more deeply. Uh, what God is trying to do at this time to restart prayer. And you got to think about it this way. If we're not, if we're not going to do it, God's going to find other people to do it, right? Remember, if it's God's will, it has to happen. And if it has to happen, what does that mean? That if we're the ones not praying, God's going to, God's going to have to find people no matter what, all right? So that's the top three news, and I hope that last one really, really inspires you. Can you imagine 16 days straight, 24 hours a day, prayer and worship? It's crazy, right? So uh, I, was, I was really inspired just reading that. And you have people from, uh, who are they saying, from Denmark, Netherlands, Europe, uh, Japan, like people from all over were coming to that place just to do that revival. So they're like basically coming to be part of history. There's tons of testimonies on how people's faith revived from that revival too. So uh, very, very powerful stuff. Take a look at Asbury University Revival. It is intense, fiery, crazy, amazing. And the Holy Spirit's working overtime on that one too. All right. Uh, let's get into some sporting news quickly over. Uh, we're going to start with some soccer. Uh, Liverpool failed to close in on the top four after a dismal draw at Crystal Palace. They draw at 0-0. Man City keep pace with Arsenal as Holland leads Bournemouth route. Uh, Manchester kept pace in the Premier League title race with a 4-1 mauling of relegation-threatened Bournemouth uh, on Saturday. And uh, Erling Holland has broken the record for most goals in a season by a Man City player, previously held by Sergio Aguero with 26. So he's now the leader um, in his first season there. Uh, also in uh, Saudi Arabia, Cristiano Ronaldo scores a, his first hat trick to send Al Nasser to the top. Cristiano Ronaldo scored a hat trick as Al Nasser beats Damak 3 0 on Saturday to move to the top of the Saudi Pro League. Ronaldo, who, has, who now has seven goals and five appearances uh, for Al Nasser since joining. Netted in the 18th, 23rd, and 44th minute to seal the victory. So good, big congratulations. He's doing well over there for $200 million a year, right? Uh, in second news, boxing is final. Gravante Davis, Ryan Garcia. The bout is finalized, and the date is pushed back to April 22nd. So that's a big fight everyone's looking forward to. So uh, I'm definitely going to try to watch it. But I'm going to try to find a way without paying money. <laughs> uh, NBA, last but not least, in NBA news, a uh, crazy game. It was Russell Westbrook's debut for the LA Clippers. And it was the second highest scoring game ever. It went to second. It went to two overtimes. The final score: one seventy six to one seventy five. Ridiculous, right? Uh, the Kings and Clippers scored the third and fourth most points in a game in NBA history, respectively, trailing only the, the Pistons and Nuggets, who had a game was one eighty six to one eighty four in triple overtime uh, in nineteen eighty three. So both teams get this shot fifty eight point six percent or better from the field and combined to hit forty four three pointers. So it was a crazy game. In other news, um, Giannis Antetokounmpo exits early with a knee injury and his day to day. KD finally gets to scrimmage with the Suns, but is ruled out of the games for the weekend and. Uh, Ben Simmons is out with a knee injury and will be reevaluated later on. So there it is, guys. That's the top three news in sports and news from around the world. Hope it's something that uh, helps you guys out when it comes to what are we going to pray for the world and repent for the world about. All right. So what does that mean, guys? You know what that means. It is the golden time. Yes, this is the golden time, a time of praise and worship to the Holy Trinity. Hope all of you guys are looking forward to giving glory to God and the Holy Spirit. So, what are we going to praise and worship today? Today, we're going to start off with His Will, and then one of my favorites, Get Out of Sin, Fight the Devil, and Win, and we'll break things down with I Have Only God. So, as one body of the Morning Star Drive, let's spend this time giving praise, honor, and glory to the Holy 
Trinity.
and that was I Have Only God. Before that, get out of sin, fight the devil and win. And of course, that first song, His Will. Hope you guys really enjoyed that time of praise and worship together, giving glory to the Holy Trinity. And it really like opens your heart, prepares it so that we can get into the word study today on the Sunday message. So uh, we had a great Sunday message, the power of the word and prayer. And of course, this is something that's very obvious for all of us to like say, oh, of course, you know, the, there is power in the word, there's power in prayer. But I really like how uh, the message was very specific and detailed on why it's that powerful, what we need to do, right? And, you know, a lot of times we'll say that, oh, we know it's powerful. But if you really knew how powerful it was, then you'd actually be doing it more, right? So I think that, uh, especially with the theme that we've had over the last couple of months, uh, you know, we're trying to we're trying to be united with the Holy Trinity. We're supposed to remain in the Holy Trinity, the Holy Trinity in us. And the only way that this can happen is when there's truly a love between each of us, because love is always two sided. And the other thing is, love is not uh, a blind thing where you love with you know, like kind of like love at first sight. You can't really fall in love with someone you don't know. You can fall in love with their looks, which is more of an attraction. But love is not blind. If it's really truly love. You have to know that person, understand them, communicate with them in order for that relationship to be healthy. So I think in the same way too, this foundation comes through uh, word and prayer. And we need to learn about God through the word and communicate with God through prayer. So these are two of the most important things that we need. Okay, so let's start off with, uh, uh, let's get into uh, today's uh, message and there's gonna be two big parts that I uh, that I heard the message and really really enjoy uh, the 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 leader that I listened to over here in Malaysia very very powerful and the way they uh, the way that this head leader organizes the word is very good like it's so easy to remember so I hope that you guys can uh, gain a lot from it too so part one is gonna talk about the power of the word okay power of the word of these times what we're living in right now right and the first thing I talked about this last week too in the sermon to the sky is we have to understand that. The word is not just word. Why is it powerful? Because John chapter 1 verse 1 says the word is God. So the power of the word is actually the power of God. So think about it in that way. How powerful is the word? Well, if the word is God, then the word has the power of God because it is God, right? So when we look at like the grand history, and if think about this, guys. If the power of the word is a power of God, then we have to realize at what level are we listening to the word because the power changes with the relationship or the level of the word. So when you look at the Old Testament time, it's a master and servant relationship. And that was a time where human beings committed the fall. And because of that, we were seeking after God only. We're only looking to God, chasing after God constantly because we are the servants. Master, would you like? Master, would you like? Kind of thing, right? And only the salvation history, when real salvation happened, only happened when Jesus came, right? So when Jesus comes, that is the New Testament time. It's a time of the Father and the Son. It's a time where uh, the Holy Trinity came down, right? Came down upon uh, the Messiah, and the history was fulfilled through Jesus Christ. And that's when salvation actually begins. No one could be saved until Jesus came. So at that point... People were seeking, remember, in the Old Testament, people were seeking God. But when you get to the New Testament time, the thing that's kind of shocking is you're seeking God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Son. You're seeking Jesus, right? So you're like, wait, what the heck is going on here? And it becomes more complicated than the Old Testament time. It's not just about seeking only God, but it's also about Jesus, right? It's about the Holy Spirit we never hear about, and it's about the Holy Son we never hear about, right? So now we're suddenly, so we're suddenly told to seek Jesus, and this is kind of what, you know, upsets the order in the Old Testament time. Like, no, we want only God. Why do I have to go through this Jesus? But that's the way God's history worked. And all throughout the Old Testament time, God was showing them that this was the method. How? Well, when, when Noah came, how do you reach God? How were you saved from the flood? Only if you followed and believed in Noah. How were you saved from uh, slavery in Egypt? Only if you followed the person that God sends, right? And that's why when you look at like John chapter 6 verse 29, right? John chapter 6 verse 29, it's basically Jesus telling people what the real work of God is, right? And what is the work of God? Jesus, people are asking, what is the work of God? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent, so the time of Noah, he's the one that said, got to believe in him, got to believe in Moses, got to believe in Joshua, got to believe in all these people. And the methodology, the way that God works was already shown to them from the very beginning. So it actually wasn't a new thing to see everyone following Jesus, 
Yes, it was very different that if they wanted to go to God, they had to go through Jesus, which is kind of crazy if you think about that too, right? But we have to understand, like John chapter 1, verse 14 say, and the word became flesh. The word became Christ, right? Now, the Lord's second coming, complete testament time here, it's supposed to be the, the level of the bridegroom and the bride. So Jesus dies in the body and he's in spirit now. Right. And Jesus, you know, Jesus was the word that became flesh. He's the Messiah and he's supposed to come back again. So here, once again, we have the entire Holy Trinity coming together with Jesus in spirit. But the biggest problem is they are spirit. No one can see Jesus like he's not in a physical body. No one sees God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy. No one sees them. So because he can't see them, he has to use someone on this earth to make history. That's how God works in this world. And that's why now it's like, wait a second, that makes it even more complicated. I mean, why, why do you need so many people, right, involved in God's history? Well, think about this. Even when Jesus came, he needed more people. He needed more than just the 12. He needed more than just 30 or 50. In order for this history to be made on this earth, it required thousands upon thousands of people spreading the gospel, having conviction in Christ, and this is how it grew, Right. Greatest example from the message I loved is, think about every organization in this world, it always starts small. And when you start, like even when I was pioneering a church, one leader, everyone listed the leader, is done. However, as the church grows, as any organization grows, if you want to become better, if you want to raise the level, you need more people involved. Different people, different departments, different areas, it becomes more complicated. You can't just say, hey, boss, look at this. Even the boss has to go to the person in charge of finance to talk to them because they're in charge of finance. The boss doesn't control all those things, right? So we have to understand that in God's history, you have to know who is making history, which area, right, to make history properly. So I really, really hope that all of us will understand this at a much, much different and higher level too, right? So we have to understand right now is the fulfillment of the promise of the New Testament time. It's a time of receiving Jesus's return, the spirit of Jesus. And we need to know it's a time that we fulfill the history of God, the purpose of creation here on the earth. That's what time it is right now, right? Remember, Jesus came back in the first coming in the flesh, but then Jesus died on the cross and he went up to heaven. So he comes back in spirit, right? So the question now is, if he comes back in spirit, how are we going to recognize Jesus if we can't see his body? Well, in Matthew, Matthew 7, verse 28, 29, that's this week's scripture. It says, Jesus spoke with authority and power. That's the sign, right? The sign is he came with authority and power, and everyone was amazed at this because even the leaders couldn't speak in this way, which means he spoke about things that no one else knew, right? He spoke in things that no one else knew about the Bible. How did people eventually recognize Jesus? Through the power and authority of the word that he preached. So all of us have to understand, when we listen to the words of God, we listen to the words of Jesus, and we believe it, then we also receive the same authority as Jesus, right? And then we became children of God, right? And because, why is, it, why is that? Because then we began to preach that same word. We received that same authority. And the same thing happens in this time period too, right? So just as people recognize Jesus through the words of God, the power and authority of the word, we have to understand the same thing happens right now. How do we recognize? Through the authority and power of the word. We unravel the secrets prophesied in the Bible and no one in the world, no one in the world can understand. Like the things that Jesus talked about, no one can understand. In the same way too, what about the words that we hear? What are the secrets that we receive of the rapture, the resurrection, the advent, time, parables, how the Lord comes, the clouds, right? All these things through the power and authority of the word. Sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes we forget how powerful those words are. <coughs> but what I remember is me being from the former faith all my life to change my mind and thoughts in just a matter of six months, six to eight months. That is a miracle. That's a miracle. The words were that big. And that's what we have to always go back to is the words of God. What is what? Look, listen to the authority and power of the word. Sometimes we forget about it because we haven't heard in a long time. And that's why we have to keep hearing the word over and over again. When you become the bride of this history, you become the closest in love to God. When you become the person that, when you, when you hear the new words of the new time period, then you are the one that, fulfills the purpose of creation. Why? Because the purpose of creation cannot be fulfilled without you in your life. 
For me, to fulfill the purpose of creation, it has to be me fulfilling it because it's about becoming the person that is the counterpart of love to God, the person that is so in love with God. It only happens with me. It doesn't happen with other people. And this is when we realize, oh, the purpose of creation is fulfilled, when we fulfill it ourselves. We have to realize once again, what level, what power and authority of the word have you received? What's the power? What's the authority? What have you learned? And that's why we have to check and check and realize again the level that we're at. What are you receiving right now? Uh, what level are you receiving the word? And that's the power of the word that, you, that, that we all receive at this time that allows us to become brides of God, that allows us to become lovers of God, right? Which leads to the second part of the message, which, which was just as powerful, which is the power of prayer. So here we are, the ones that listen to the words of God and we receive the Holy Trinity and, and, and uh, Jesus, right? We connect with them and they all come in spirit, right? So we're in the body and the Holy Trinity, Jesus are in spirit, which means that they can't communicate it with us directly. It's not like you sit there and you hear with your physical ears Jesus talking to you. You can't hear it, right? But where do we, where do we communicate? We communicate with our spirits, but here's the thing, even if Jesus spoke to your spirit and your spirit's like, okay, I got it, I got it. Does your body know what Jesus told you? And the answer is most of the times, no. Which means what is the only method, the only channel that we communicate with the Holy Trinity and with Jesus? It's only spiritual through prayer. When we pray, what happens to us? We become spiritual. We hear God's voice. We hear the Lord's voice. We hear Jesus's voice talking to us, inspiring us and telling us what we need to do. When we pray, we hear the voice of the Lord and we have spiritual thoughts, right? We get spiritual thoughts, spiritual conversations with the Holy Trinity, spiritual conversation with Jesus. And we have to realize that if that's the way you connect with God, uh, the Holy Trinity, if that's the way you can actually connect and talk to them, do you know how powerful prayer is that you can connect to the almighty God, that you can connect to Jesus Christ, right? To the Holy Trinity. You could talk to the Holy Spirit and you could talk to them and you're like, wait a second, how powerful is prayer? It connects you to the almighty, all-powerful God. And if we become brides of this history, think about this. If you get married, do you want to talk to your wife or your husband just two minutes a day, just five minutes a day? No, you want to talk all day. Not only do you want to talk all day, you want to help them. You want to solve their problems. You want to give your husband or wife what they want. And as crazy as it sounds, think about this. Uh, whether you're a husband or wife, you can only help and give to your spouse as much as power and authority that you have, right? So if you're poor and you have nothing, it's very hard to give your husband or wife anything, right? But imagine you're a king. A king has more power and authority than a regular person. And if you're God, think about this. The ultimate power and authority, they control creation, angels, right? Nature, all these things are controlled by the Holy Trinity, which means nothing is impossible for them. The big question is, why is prayer so powerful? Because it's not about what you say. It's about who is listening to that prayer. That's the important part. Who's listening to your prayer? Why is prayer so powerful? If, if prayer, so, pr prayer can become powerful depending on who listens to it. So if you're praying and some homeless person is listening to your prayer, it's got no power. But the only reason you have power in your prayer because the most powerful, almighty, omniscient, omnipotent God is listening to your prayer. And he wants to answer them. Mark chapter, 11, Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Don't just pray, but you got to believe. Believe you've already gotten it. Believe you have it and it will be yours. Pray. Pray and tell God what you want. Pray and tell God that this is what you really need. And believe, believe absolutely. Of course you, if God, God doesn't God have the power to grant it? And not only does he have the power, on top of that, he loves you. What would you not do for the one that you love? What would you not do for your child? Right? And of course, there's a caveat. Right? The caveat is, if you love someone, you want to do things for them that help. Right? You don't want to do things that hurt them. And that's why parents will sometimes not give something to their children because it's not good for them. Right? 
What type of power do we have in prayer? You have the power and authority to have the Almighty God listen to you. That's the power of prayer. That's the power of those that believe. Right? We have the ability to talk to God. Right? We have the ability to let Him work upon us because we believe it. And here's the thing. If you've never tried prayer, you will never know or feel the power of prayer. Those who have tried it but not, have not used prayer to the full extent of power, you still will not know how great the power of prayer is. And here's the big thing. If you knew how great the power of prayer was, you would always use it. If you really knew. That's how you'll know. Look at yourself right now. Are you praying all the time? Are you praying for all these things that are going on in your life? Because if you did, you would be using your prayer constantly. You'd be using it constantly. Pray. When you read the Bible, you're going to see that like the Holy Trinity has like different, uh, different roles too. Don't just pray to God. Pray to, pray to the Holy Spirit. Pray to Jesus. Call out to them separately. Call out. Can, don't just call out and converse only with only one of them. Do you want to receive blessing only from one or do you want to receive it from everyone? All the Holy Trinity. Do you want to receive it from Jesus or not? Call out to them separately. Receive from them separately. And this is the power of prayer for those in this history. So check yourself. How much do you believe in the power of prayer that you've been using? How much do you believe? You can tell by how much you pray. So now that we've received the words from the one that God has sent, right? As Jesus said in John chapter 6, 29, the work of God is to believe in the one that he has sent. And when he comes, the person that God sends is going to deliver the words of God. But how do you know these words are from Jesus? How do you know it's Jesus talking to us? By the power and authority of the word. And after all this, like after you fulfill the purpose of creation, after you fulfill all the words, the rapture, all these different things, they're done, what's left? Well, it's just, it's what we've always heard is only those that stand firm till the end will be saved, right? Only those that stand firm till the end will be saved. And where is that from? That's from Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. The one who stands firm to the end will be saved, which means don't just sit there and say, I'm done. Since when are you done? If you're done, go die then. You should be dead if you're done. The fact that you're still living, you have a lot of work to do, Right? It's not done. What's, what's done? If it's done, then why would God continue this history on this earth? It'd be finished. The earth would be destroyed. We got work to do. This is true victory. We got work to do. Don't stop. Maintain until the end. Right? Maintain it until the end. Right? Come before God knowing that, guess what? If you don't stop and maintain your faith until the end, what's going to happen is when difficulties come, what's going to happen to that difficulty? It's going to be shredded up and become fertilizer that helps you to grow if you're ready for it. If you take the words and prayer as your weapons and you make it into your defense and you make it into something where you're like, ah, oh, this is what I have to do. So what is the best thing you need to do is? Yes, we have the word in prayer. But the best thing you need to do, to, to the best defense mechanism we have right now is always check yourself. You got to be self-aware. What's going on with yourself? Always check and review yourself. Right? You can't, you know, if, if you have the power to do so many things, but you don't use it to the max potential, the max capacity, even if you have the most powerful weapon, you can lose. You'll still lose because you haven't used it to the max. If Satan's six and, and God is seven and you only use up to five and Satan's using up to six, you're going to lose. Got to use it to seven. Got to use it to seven. Check yourself, guys. Learn. Fix. Change. Two things I ask you. Two questions. Number one is, how well do you know God's word? How well do you know his history? How, do you know, how well do you know God's word right now? And how well do you pray and use that power of prayer? And those are the things you got to check yourself with this week. All right? 
So there it is, guys. That is today's word study, the Sunday message review. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. It's something I think a lot of us will really gain a lot from. I hope that uh, uh, it helps you to you know think about what we're going through in our lives each and every day. And I hope it's something that we can look at and say, oh, this is what I need to do. This is what I, oh, I got to check myself, right? And then use the power and authority of the word and prayer. And this is when we're really going to launch, especially in this difficult time. All right. So there it is, guys. That is the end of today's word study. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. Let's get into today's song of choice for today. And I'm going to get into uh, Israel and the New Breed. And this song is You Are Good. And this is a great song because I, I listened to Israel when he went to go visit uh, Lakewood Church over there in Houston with Joel Osteen. And he's an awesome praise leader. So everyone, this is Israel and New Breed. And this song is an oldie but a goodie. It's You Are Good. You are good.
was an amazing and fun song. That's Israel and New Breed with You Are Good. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard this song before. It's a very, very famous song in the past, but I enjoyed it a lot. Hope you guys enjoyed it too. All right. So let's get into the final section for today. And of course, every single Monday, we do have 2G Talks with Eddie Kwan over there in San Francisco. And uh, he's got uh, a lot of good questions for us today. He's going to talk about uh, what to, what are you developing yourself with right now, right? And I hope it's something that all of us will look at and say, yeah, this is so true. This is something that I want to develop too. What do we do to develop ourselves right now during this time? And of course, he's going to ask for people to share what uh, they think 20-year-olds, people in their 20s should be developing and also what are you developing right now. So I hope that you guys uh, will listen well. Everyone, please welcome Eddie Kwan from San Francisco, currently in Hawaii with 2G Talks. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another week's episode of 2G Talks. Uh, once again, we're coming to you from, you know, the last time zone uh, where, you know, there is a major place like this uh, here in Hawaii. Uh, and so for everyone else, I know it's already Monday. For me, it's quite uh, early, actually, on Saturday uh, by the time I'm recording this. Uh, but I really want to start everyone off really strong as we make our way into, for me, this weekend and also for you guys uh, this upcoming week. Uh, it's I hope that everyone's been having a good time and you know, good is kind of subjective, but uh, when there's one thing I'm thinking about, cause every time I listen to the message nowadays, whoever, like whichever sermon deliverer that I listen to, they always talk about how now is a difficult time. Like that's kind of a recurring theme from each person, but even that's kind of like a, a subjective thing. Right. And so there's uh, the, this YouTuber that I watched for a while where he talks about how something can be fun or good or feels good, like in the moment that you do it. And there are other things that feel good, even though it was hard at the time when you reflect back on it in the future. And so, yes, there might be some difficulties, either personal or worldwide or province wide or nationwide or wherever you are currently. Uh, but I think it really is defined by what, what we do now. Right. So even the memory that we have of 2023 uh, in this final week of February, like this is something that would, you know, become either, a, a you know, it could be something that we forget. Or it could be a positive memory that we leave behind. Uh, and I mentioned that today because today's topic is about developing ourselves throughout, you know, this time, right, throughout this week. And so this is something I really want to get into because for each person, I really want to know, like, what is it that you're developing right now? Because each of us need to be doing this, you know, and I really hope that many people leave comments below uh, saying what it is that they're working on. Uh, because this is something that I would love to hear from each person about even for uh, for myself, like if you think about it, huh, like what would you have liked to have developed in your 20s? Or if you're not in your 20s yet, or like if you're not in your mid-20s, yeah, it's like, huh, like, what do you think would be important to develop in that time frame? Uh, and you can think of it as like, you know, what you would have wanted to do if you could go back into your 20s or what it is that you're developing right now that you're like, oh, yeah, like maybe I should have done this earlier, but I'm working on this right now uh, because I really think this is an opportunity, right? So for me, the idea that this is just a period of, of tribulations or suffering, it doesn't quite capture the entirety of, of this situation because it's also an opportunity to grow. Like for myself, one of the things that I'm doing currently um, while I'm here is I'm studying for an examination and this has been like a long time in the running. And so this is something I'm really trying to work on because uh, this has been something I've been trying to do since the tail end of college. But there were so many things, both in terms of like responsibilities to, you know, my school and to my work and through uh, to my family and also really to, you know, all the missions that I was doing for the church, too. Um, and so there were so many times where it felt like I couldn't put down one thing in order to focus on this thing that I need to develop. Uh, and really, I think it's really fitting with this week's message about like what it is that we need to focus on, right? So uh, when I think about this examination, like, oh, I can think of it from a physical perspective, but we really know that fruit born outside of the vine or away from the vine, just separately, uh, it really doesn't last, right? And only when we focus on God and the Trinity, do we bear the fruit that will last eternally and that, you know, has God involved in the process of making it. And that's something that I truly Really want to so that's something that actually held me back in the past I was like oh like should I do this right is this God's will that's a question that many people have probably asked too and so just like last week's message I'm really praying about this to check each of the, those things too uh, but yeah so I'm really curious on to know like what 
what everyone else thinks too. <laughs> like the the last few days here, we've been having uh like the extended family uh visit. Also, Providence members come visit, and they have this young boy, like only like sixteen months. So I've been playing a lot with him too, and I can really see the whole family coming together really uh, for this kid too. Uh, so that like, it's been really great to see the future. Uh, of the world right like <laughs> when you see a baby's face it just kind of melts away like everything like all the stress all the all the the, the questions and the problems of the world mm. and you get to see it from a new perspective and it, it is very interesting who knows what the future can hold and i think this is also another thing as we start this week to think about oh like i don't know what it is that you're going through and especially in the pandemic and covid it you can feel alone and isolated uh, but don't feel that way and know that there's hope for the future too because uh, one of the things that the parents of this uh, baby you know told me was like yeah it's interesting because he's so well socialized and he gets along with adults and with kids and like you know he easily will go uh, and play with other adults too and that's a really important skill because a lot of babies are really shy and when you're a baby, that's okay, but if you're like not well socialized, even as you grow older, it can be something that sets you back, right? But they were telling me, yeah, it's interesting because we had him in COVID, right? And so for a time, it was literally just, you know, him with, you know, his parents at home. So we're like, yeah, we don't even know where this is coming from, like, like how he's not shy and how he's able to just get along with people in this sort of way too so all of that's like been such an amazing blessing for them uh and i can really see in the kid i can't wait to see uh you know the future of providence grow together with him as well uh, so i really hope that everyone is doing a, a great job and yes i know it's amazing that other people like danny are doing like this mental health segment and stuff too and so i really pray that doing whatever you can to kind of refresh your minds and refresh your spirits uh and and even your bodies too is something that you can do throughout the week so that we can continue to do the work of developing polishing ourselves right just as i'm studying for this examination too like there's at times when it's it might be hard to just sit down and study uh but then like you know through all the various different ways God encourages me once again, whether it's through talking with other people, whether it's through interacting with this baby, whether it's going out to go see the sunrise and exercising, doing these kinds of things. Each of these things help to kind of refresh our minds and to re, re help us rethink our, our perspectives and our positions. And I really hope it's something that every, each and every person can do. Because in the entire time that, you know, I've been in Providence and been running, I've seen many people like burn out, you know, due to various reasons. But the reasons for burnout are actually and not that important because you can burn out for any number of reasons too. So what's more important is like how easily can you get back up and like what does it take for you to get back up? And I hope that it's actually as something as simple as going out for a walk and going to see the sun or going out and, you know, praying outside or like going to go talk to someone who you know will be supportive and will have good words for you to hear no matter what. All of these things are things that we have within God's will and something that I really felt within the last few years that no matter how far, you know, how far we might have sunk or how far like our mental health or our states might be, there's a way to get back up. And so I hope that each of us can find it throughout this week once again. And of course, all of that comes through the word and I know for a fact that as long as you pray and as long as you listen to the word and as long as you're open to the Trinity, that they speak to us directly. Uh, you can, will be talking about something and you will be praying about something and you'll be doing something and the Trinity will use that exact thing in the message. And I've had this happen so many times within the last decade. Uh, and, and I know that, that the Trinity will continue to do this for each and every one of us. So I really hope that everyone has strength as they start this uh, fresh new week as we make our way into March. You know, it's one of my favorite months, right, because we have so much to celebrate in March. Uh, and it's actually my, my birthday is also in March, too. So March is, is a month that I really, really like. And so let's celebrate this entire month together with each other. And I'll catch you guys on another week's episode of 2G Talks. And thank you so much, Eddie, for another wonderful episode of 2G Talks. Hope you guys really enjoyed it, too. If you have any questions, you know, if you want to answer his questions about uh, what should people in their 20s be developing. And also on top of that, uh, I think another big question is, what are you developing right now? Hope you guys will put that in the comments below. Encourage uh, Eddie doing just an amazing job. Uh, wherever he is, whether San Francisco or Hawaii, he's doing a lot of uh, amazing things for this history, all right? So there it is, guys. That is the end of today's Monday podcast. Hope you guys will have an amazing and awesome day. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. <laughs>
It's the morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know. 